Well, hello there, folks. I hope you're well. I really do. This is part five in the series. What's the series called again? I can't remember it, even though I made the name up. Why all things were better in my day. That is, why all things were better in my day. This is part five. So there's four that have already been done. If you've not seen them, you'll find them on one of my playlists. On a playlist, I think it's called Growing Up. The playlist is called Growing Up. I can't remember what the first four were about. I'm just, I just talk. And I'm going to do it again. I'll tell you what this one's about. And then I'll tell you what number six and number seven are going to be about. This one is about American TV series. American TV series that I used to watch in in and around the 70s. Now, I say that, the series is called Why It's Better When I Was Growing Up. That is because when I was a kid, I thought everything was better. TV, music, film, things we ate, things we liked to do, everything. And I said I was going to do a... a a little video on one about a week ago. Wish I hadn't I said it. I thought it'd be one video lasting an hour. It would cover everything. The first one lasted an hour. I can't remember what it covered, but that was an hour of my life gone. And then I've tried to limit them to about 30 minutes because people saying that it was too long, too many ads were coming in, and when the ad was ending, it was taking me back 30 seconds of what I'd already said, so you was getting it repeated. One of them is bad enough, folks. You don't want it twice. So the last couple have been 30 minutes. This one will be as well. This one might be less. There's not as much to this one. But what I was doing was I thought the 70s was my year in the best of times. But then I realised some of the stuff I watched and did came out in the 60s. And I've done a cut-off of about 81, 82. I've let a couple of things get through the very, very early 80s. Because I was still something of a child then, still growing up, watching a load of TV, listening to a load of music. So, primarily, well, this is virtually all American, or, or it should be. And I'm going to give you some different things that I grew up with. Now, the idea being... If you like some of the things I've mentioned, comments down below, thumbs up and let me know what you liked and why you liked them. If some of the things I've mentioned you don't like, tell me and tell me why you don't like them. And if I've missed some things off that you like that you think I should have included, again, tell me. And what I'll do, I'll agree with the ones that I, you know, that I shouldn't have missed off and I'll say, yeah, you're right there. And there'll be others where I won't agree with you. And then what I'm going to do right at the end of it all, because it's going to be seven parts of this, by the looks of things, I'm going to tell you what six, in fact I'll tell you now, number six will be kid stuff, kids I listened to when I was a kid, from being a kid, it's American and British stuff, and the last one, last one of all, last but not least, I say not least, it'll be the longest one of all, is British comedy, oh my god there's loads of it, loads of it, none of it PC, none of it we can watch anymore, more's the pity, as I say, somebody needs to get a proper new TV channel out, t t it should be called probably TV proper gold, never mind TV gold, Gold are still worried about what they can show. It should be called proper gold, where you can put anything on. If it makes people laugh, put it on. And if some don't laugh and don't like it, then watch something else. That's how it should be. I wish somebody would be brave enough to do it. I do, honestly. Anyway, right, we'll start with American stuff. Now, I will tell you now, some of the American stuff I, n I weren't a lover of, although it did massive. Some of it had people in that I loved. I'll give you one. Rawhide with Clint Eastwood. That was a big vehicle that set him off before he went and did his three spaghetti westerns and came back and became an absolute superstar. And he has been ever since. And rightly so. I loved it all, Clint. But I wasn't really a watcher of Ride. I think I watched Wagon Train. That's never on my list. It comes to me two minutes ago. That's how the list come. Stuff comes all the time. You just think of stuff and you think, oh, Wagon Train, that was all right. I watched Wagon Train now and again, but I wasn't an avid watcher. Rawhide, I hardly ever watched. So, right. I'll go with the things that I did watch, the things that I did like, or the things that I remember. Wanted Dead or Alive, another Western thing. A lot of my stuff being the kid was Western because that's what we loved as boys, as kids. Wanted Dead or Alive, that was Steve McQueen, believe it or not. He played in that series before he became famous. I think he had a sawn off shotgun in it. I think he was. That's what he used to carry around with him. Yeah, Wanted Dead or Alive, really enjoyed that. I can barely remember it, but no, I enjoyed it. And then, Branded. Do you remember Branded? That's not the way to die. What will you do when you're branded? But you know you're a man. Duh, 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 duh. Do you remember that? It, was, it probably never went like that in your ears, but yeah. And then The Rifleman. Do you remember that? Now, what do you remember about those two? Did you get it? I think clever ones did. I'll tell you who got it. Fell over there, over that, to, is it the Irish Sea, is it called, whatever, called Keith? He's got that. Chuck Connors. Chuck Connors starred in them both. They were both vehicles for Chuck Connors. But I love Branded. I don't know what it was about. I think when they ripped his badges off and he had his young son in it, if I remember rightly. I love Branded. So Branded and The Rifleman. Uh, the Untouchables, old Elliot Ness. I know we're going off westerns, but it came to me, so I put it in the. It kept, when it comes to me, I put it on. Now, that could have been 60s and not 70s, but I loved it. Some of those were 60s, so don't worry about it. The Untouchables, Elliot Ness, oh I, with Al Capone. Bonanza. Now, I watch Bonanza now and again, 
Never a massive lover of it, but watched it now and again. And I loved your man from it that went on to Little House on the Prairie. Can't remember his name, but I, I know it. Anyway, watch Bonanza now and again. Now, my favourite two, I've already mentioned one of them, but I'll give you one before it. The Big Valley. I love The Big Valley. Barbara Stanwyck. And I forgot, I always forget that Lee Majors was in that. But I absolutely loved The Big Valley. I thought it was great. And then The High Chaparral. My favourite of them all. I said in the yesterday's video, probably my most enjoyable uh, series of, as a kid growing up. I used to love that. I really did. The High Chaparral. Buck Connors. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Richard Baser and David Edison. David Edison was always the number two man, but he had the looks, he had everything about him. We liked David Edison. Yeah, Voice at the Bottom of the Sea. The Odd Couple. Now, I know that's comedy, but you see with me, it just came to me later on that I've not got it, that in there. I've not, over the years, especially years ago, watched much American comedy. Many did, but I didn't. And it's not that I find the humour unfunny, but I never really watched MASH. I never watched Cheers. I never watched... I never watched many of these series at all. There was only the Odd Comedy I used to watch. Now, being a kid, I watched the I Love Lucy's and stuff, but when I got older, I never watched many American comedies. But that said, we had so much brilliant stuff on that was British, I probably never had time for it, because comedy in Britain was absolutely booming in the 70s. It was unbelievably good. Even the bad stuff was still good. Um, so, But I thought of The Odd Couple. I used to love The Odd Couple. Was it Oscar and Felix? I think it was, and I think it was a remake of the Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon film. I think it was Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon. But I love the series more than I love the film. He was in it, I think. Was it Jack Klugman? I think he played Quincy later. He was in it. I can't remember the guy that played. I think he played Oscar, I think. I think the other guy plays Felix. Anyway, whoever the other guy was, I can't remember his name. But I loved it. I thought it was a great show. If memory serves, that used to be on a Saturday night in the main at about quarter past half past 11. It was late. I don't, I'd only be sort of 11, 12, 13 then. But my man and pa would let me stay up. Or... I'd be babysitting for him because even then I used to babysit at our house or my uncle's house in probably in Orford, about six or seven miles from where we lived. Um, you'd have the Generation Game and then maybe a, the two Ronnies are or, or Markham and Wise. Then you might have something like you might even have Dave Allen after that for an hour because it was a bit more adult, nine o'clock, a bit of oh no, nine o'clock, of course you'd have. You'd have something like Kojak or Cannon or Stask, you know, you'd have one of them on. Then you'd have Match of the Day. After match of the day, you'd normally have Parkinson. And after Parky, you'd have the odd couple. Oh, what a lineup that was. I think I'm right. I think some Saturdays they've all been on at the same time. No, when I say that, you won't have Sasuke and Lutch and Kojak at the same time. You'd have one or the other. Same as you wouldn't have Columbo and Kojak and you'd have one or the other. You wouldn't have Cannon and Kojak and you'd have, well, you couldn't fit them both on. Not with Frank Cannon's waistline. You'd never get both of them on. No, you'd have one or the other. Then you'd have, as I say, the old football. Then you'd have Parky. Then you'd have the odd couple. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Right, where are we now? Hawaii Five O or Hawaii Fifty. You still love it. Love it. What was his name? Jack. Jack Lord. Jack Lord. Great show. Really enjoyed it. And then we're going here then. Every it just came to mind. I'm putting them as they came to mind. Roots. That was a cracking show. I think that was in the seventies. You know, Roots. Come to Kinte. I think that was the seventies. Could have been eighties. I think it was the seventies. Cannon. I've got Frank Cannon. Frank Cannon. Loved it. Watching him getting out of his car. Cold Jack. Starsky and Hutch. Now, I've got to confess the next one. Love the music to it. Never used to watch it a lot. The Rockford Files. No, it was good. Jim Rockford. I know it was good. But I never really watched it as much as the rest. And many would be surprised by that. I mean, many would be surprised I watched Cannon. Because a lot didn't like Cannon. But I like Frank Cannon. There's something about him. Was it William Conrad? I think it was. I liked it. Um, Columbo. Love Columbo. Then Kung Fu. Kwai Chan Kane. David Carradine. Now, we all love that. Because at that time, that came out, everybody was Kung Fu fighting with old Carl Douglas, wasn't they? In the early 70s. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not going to do that. I got it wrong to start with. So I'm not going to do that. But yeah, Kung Fu, David Canavide. If you walk on the rice paper. Great show. Loved it. Everybody loved it. Now, I wanted to put another show in and I forgot its name. I forgot its name because I loved its star. I loved its star. And I thought, I know what it is. It's Banachek. Uh -uh. Computer says no, it wasn't Banachek. Banachek, if I remember correctly, was George Peppard. Well, before his A team. And I think I used to watch the odd one of them and it weren't too bad. That wasn't the one I meant. The one I meant, do you remember this one, folks? Now, some of you will, but many of you won't. And if you remember it, do you remember who was in it? I'm going to give you a bit of background here. Beretta. Oh, I used to love Beretta. I can't remember it. Can't remember even one of the shows. Same as I can't remember Man in a Suitcase. Oh, wait a minute, on my previous one. 
Did man in a suitcase have a previous one? I forgot the Baron. Steve Forrest, the Baron. I love the Baron. Pretend the Baron's in the last one. Just come to me just, you see. The Baron, I barely remember it. Man in a suitcase, I barely remember it, but I liked it. Beretta, I barely remember it, but I know where he liked it. But I liked it because of the, the, the lead, the actor in it. Do you remember who it was? Well, I'm going to tell you. I think he was called Robert Blake. I'm sure it was. I don't know what his name is, but I know what he was in. Robert Blake. I'm pretty sure it was. Now, he was in a film at, at about the same time called Tell Them Willy Boy Is Here. And he starred in it with Robert Redford. And I think Robert Redford was chasing him. I think he'd been on, Robert Blake had been on uh, reservation. I think he was Indian or part Indian. I think he'd escaped from the reservation. And he was chasing him either because he escaped or he might have killed someone on the reservation or stole something and escaped. And Robert Redford was after him. He was in that and he was in a, what they call a cult classic called Electrogliding Blue, where he played, I think, a motorway, uh, a motorcycle policeman before Chips. I've not put Chips on my list, although I've just mentioned it. I didn't really watch Chips and I don't know when it came out. So, yeah, he was in that and he was brilliant. So I just love Robert Blake. Anyway. I think he died only two or three years ago, I think, because I looked him up. And I think, and I, I had read about this, but I forgot. I thought he went to prison for something pretty bad, and I couldn't think what. He didn't. He was tried for murder. I don't think he went to prison. Tried for murder. He got off with it. I'm not saying he did it or not. To his second wife. His second wife was shot in a car outside a restaurant where him and her were both eating. Now he's saying she went to the car... He went to the car for something and then realised he'd left something in the restaurant. He might have actually been his gun, I think. Went back in the restaurant, I think, to pick up his gun. Whilst he's there, she shot herself. And he's saying it wasn't with his gun and his gun was in the restaurant. That's what he went back in for. Anyway, in the end, they didn't find him guilty. But weirdly, and this is really weird, his wife, the second wife who killed herself, she's supposed to have been extremely promiscuous throughout Hollywood. Uh, and she'd married ten times. He was, well, he couldn't. She couldn't have married 11, could she, if she'd killed herself? He was the 10th husband. He was the 10th and final husband. Now, you wouldn't normally have that where a pretty well-known actor marries somebody. It's normally the actor or actress that's been married loads of times, not the person. The person doing the marrying isn't the one that's outside the acting profession, as a rule. But, yes, she was married 10 times. Last time was with Robert Blake. Died. We don't really know who did it, but he was tried and got away. They said he didn't. Anyway, I think he's died since. Uh, right, six million dollar man, Steve Majors. Steve Majors, is it? Not Majors. Lee Majors. Steve Majors. Steve Austin. Steve Austin. Lee Majors. Six million dollar man. The streets of San Francisco with Michael Douglas, Carl Malden, and his nose. I like that. Brilliant show. Here's one for you. If I said Pepper Anderson, would you know what I'm talking about? You would, wouldn't you? Police woman, old Pepper. I liked her. I liked her a lot. Ironside, oh Ironside, Raymond Burr. I know we did Perry Mason before that. I don't really remember Perry, Ma Perry Mason that much, but I remember Ironside, liked him, liked it. We had a comment on the channel the other day of one of the followers here, or subscribers or watchers, about him being gay. I did read him being, was gay, but I forgot that, but somebody pointed it out to me. Not that it mattered, there was, was a discussion about gay people in, uh, in movies and TV, and they mentioned he was gay, and I had read it in the past, but I'd forgotten. Uh, and then I'll give you the last one, one that I really, really loved. And there's a story behind this, many of you might remember it. Do you remember it? Elias Smith and Jones with Pete Duell and Ben Murphy. Do you remember? A cracking show. I loved that. I loved it. Two guys that came from nowhere, massive stars in no time. I think it was the top rated show in America for a couple of years as soon as it came out. And unfortunately, Pete Duell, that's, that's the story behind it for those that don't remember. He killed himself, didn't he? I think he shot himself or hung himself two years in. I think he shot himself. Only two years it'd been going for, killed himself. What a shame. What a shame. And that really is it for my American drama. I'm not doing the kiddie stuff. That's the older stuff. But that's the kind of stuff I was watching in and around the 70s. And because I left these off, I've got three more shows to give you. I left them off the last one. The uh, the last one in the series. Why are all things... Why are all things were better in my day? See, I can't remember what it's called, even though I entitled it I left off talk shows in the 70s I'd be watching Parky I mentioned him a few minutes ago Parkinson I'd watch Parky a lot didn't like Russell Arty I did no problem at all Grace Jones wasn't kidding him but most of us was and I'll also bring in old Terry if you don't mind old Terry Terry Wogan now he only started in 82 but remember we're having 81 82 and that as our cut off those three all masters of the trade especially Parky I absolutely loved Parky I really really did 
rewatched the David Never one again lately because I love David Never in it. It was fantastic. And I also rewatched the Peter Houston novel one. Two of the best he ever did for me, that. But that's it for me with American TV and three British talk, so talk show hosts thrown in. And guess what? Less than 16 minutes. Wee! That one's This one's out tomorrow night, folks. Should be out for nine o'clock. You know, no. Yes, I'll put it out tomorrow. I was going to do it tonight as a bonus, but no. Tomorrow night, nine o'clock. That's Tuesday.